Hello, my name is Sydney Kraviak, and I'm a Youth Services Librarian at Peters Township Public Library in McMurray, PA. Um, I have been working in the library world for a little over two years, and before that, I taught for special education for five years in Tennessee. I'm excited to show you how to make your own virtual escape room with Google Forms. So I'm going to switch over to screen sharing. That way you can see what I can see. So how to create your own virtual escape room. Before we get started, I want to take a moment to thank the Pennsylvania Library Association and PA Ford for allowing us to use their conferencing software to create this tutorial. So how did I end up making escape rooms? When I was teaching, we used Google Classrooms and quizzes for some assignments and reviews. When it was time for state testing, I had an algebra-themed escape room that was a review of concepts we had covered throughout the year. And that was my first foray into virtual escape rooms. When I started working at the Peters Township Public Library, we began planning our first physical escape room. We had about 50 teens attend our teen-only Harry Potter escape room. They were divided into houses and took turns trying to escape detention with Dolores Umbridge. Professor Umbridge had taken their wands and requested the mentors to give the misfits a stern talking to about their behavior. Professor McGonagall, however, had left some clues, uh, so hopefully they would find their wands before the Dementors arrived. The next year, we had an adult-only Harry Potter escape room. Uh, we had about 80 adults come throughout the day. They were trying to find flu powder somewhere in the Gryffindor common room. The storyline took place during the Battle of Hogwarts, and participants were trying to help the younger students escape by following Hermione's clues to the flu powder. Our most recent escape room is a superhero and supervillain themed one. We unfortunately had to cancel it due to the state's uh, mandate that all public libraries close, but we're looking forward to rescheduling it when we do open again. Now the Hogwarts digital escape room that I created has been all around the world um, and it's had 98,000 hits so far since it was released on Thursday, March 19th, just before 1 p.m. So, but how can you make your own virtual escape room? Well, first thing you need is a Google account. If you are an educator and are, have a Google educator account, you are in good shape. Education accounts have uh, extra storage and access to Google Classrooms. But if you just have a regular account like me, you're fine and you can still do what you need to do. So once you're in your regular account, in your drive, you can go to create a new item and go down to the bottom where it says more and over to Google Forms. If you look at the arrow, you'll see you have an option to create a blank form or one from a template. There is not a template for how to create a virtual escape room, so you are going to select blank form. Now you have a brand new empty blank form. So this form is like a survey where it just asks for information, opinions, and depending on your questions. For a virtual escape room, we needed to have right and wrong answers. So in the top right-hand corner, we're gonna go to the gear, which gives us our settings. So the first tab under settings is general. If you're doing this for a classroom or a specific group of people, you probably wanna use some of these settings, such as collecting addresses or only allowing one, uh, one response per person. But for me in a public library, I don't need to or want to collect that data, so I did not select any of those. Presentation alters how it's presented to the participants. So for my escape room, I chose not to do the progress bar because I didn't want people to know how close they might be to the end. Uh, for an escape room, you do not want to shuffle the question order because you need it to go in that specific order. If you're doing a, just a quiz for a classroom and you don't want anybody peeking on each other's screen, you might want to do that. And then the bottom one, show link to submit another response, that's up to you. Now, quizzes, this is the most important part. We are going to turn this Google form into a quiz, actually. Turning it into a quiz allows you to have point values if you're using it for an actual assessment in a, maybe a classroom type environment, but it allows you to do right and wrong answers. You have to have right and wrong answers um, for people to solve your puzzles. So down below, there's some more options for releasing your grade immediately or later. I just left it immediately for me, and then respondents can see missed questions, correct answers, and point values. If you're doing this for an escape room, none of this matters because they would go back and eventually get the right answer. So they would only see that all their questions were correct at the end. 
So after you've changed your settings and you've made it a quiz, you want to make sure you hit save in the bottom right hand corner. Um, if you need to go back and change any of the settings at any time, they are back there uh, with the gear. So if you notice, some things on our screen might have changed a little bit. And that's fine. So we're going to take a moment to look at some of the other settings we have here. Um, to the right of our question box, we see we've got six items. The first one allows you to add additional questions, which is something you would need to do. Next, you could import questions. So again, um, in a classroom type environment, if you have them from a Word document, you could uh, bring them in. You can add additional titles and descriptions, pull in images, videos, and then create different sections and breaks. So we're going to go ahead and add two more sections now. You can see at the top, each section is now labeled section one, two, and three. So let's title our escape room. So this is our practice virtual escape room. And let's work on our first question. My first question is, which door should you walk through? It automatically changes to multiple choice. Over on this side, you can see there's lots of different options for the kind of question you want to ask. For this escape room, I chose to only do multiple choice. That way it was very clear that there was a right answer and a wrong answer. If you do short answer or paragraph, that's something where it doesn't tell people how they did on it until you go back in and score that question. So you want to be careful with what types of questions you use if you want it to be something that they can complete independently on, um, without any guidance from you. So our options, we have door number one, door number two, door three, and door four. Okay, so I have my question, I have my four options. Down at the bottom, there's answer key. If you're just using this for a classroom quiz, definitely use answer key to mark your correct answer. And you can also give feedback for incorrect answers. We don't need to do that since we're doing it for an escape room. What we do need to do is come over to the right-hand side, make sure it's toggled onto required. That way they have to answer the question, they can't move forward and skip it. And then we're going to click on these three dots. So these three dots <clears throat> give you a shuffle answer, a shuffle option for your answer choices. You can select that if your heart so desires. What you definitely do have to select is go to section best, based on answers. So once we select that, we see next to our answer options, it says continue to next section. So if you remember, we added sections early. We have section one, section two, section three. So let's make section two. It's going to be our wrong answer, and section three is going to be the right answer. Let's make door one the right answer. So door one, if they answer door one, they will go to section three because they're right. If they answer door two, they're wrong. If they answer door three, they're wrong. If they answer door four, they're wrong. Now back to these settings on the other side. So if we wanted to add an image in here, you can see you have options for upload using your camera, different things. One thing to notice, if you do do it by URL, um, Google says that they want to, you to make sure you have a license to use it. So I highly recommend using the Google image search. So I just look for door. Find a fun image of a door. And now it's there. So whenever this question pops up, it's got that door with it. Now we have our right and our wrong. So if someone's wrong, we need to tell them that they're wrong. So maybe open the door and a snarling lion appears. Quickly slam your body against the door to shut it. Maybe you should go back and check your clues. 
Now, since they're wrong, we want to make sure they go back to the question and they have to answer it again. So at the bottom of section two, you see it says after section two, we want them to go back to section one because we want them to answer that question and try again. So they're right. Crack open the door and you see the treasure chest. Found it. This is again where you could add more images to help assist. So we want maybe want a lion. Lion snacking on some meat. Sends the right image. Now I want to make sure if I want to find a picture of a treasure chest, I click back on that section or else I would have accidentally added a treasure chest, the previous one. If that did happen though, you can pick up your images and drag them around. So let's do that just for argument's sake. Treasure chest. Lots of fun options here. So I accidentally added the treasure chest in my previous section. I'm just going to click it and drag it down to section three. And drag it down to section three. There we go. So now we have our title, a question, and two sections to send it to. So at the very top of our screen, there's an eye. This eye allows you to preview it as a participant might see it. So on my first page, whenever they first click on it, I see practical virtual escape room and my questions. So let's click a question, an option we know is wrong and see what happens. There's my lion. And if we go back and click on the correct answer, there's our treasure chest. I'm gonna go ahead and submit that. You can see what it looks like after someone has submitted it. Now let's go back and look on our side. Up at the top, you'll see now it says responses with a number one to it, next to it. So one means it had one response. One person has responded, it was me just now. So under the responses, it allows you to view just a summary of everything that's happened. You can view by individual question or by each individual, which is very good if you're doing this for a specific group. Um, up at the top, it also has the create spreadsheet option within Google that would create a spreadsheet and extract all your answers from this data into that spreadsheet. Now, as you continue to work, it will continue to grow. Just to show you, this is what the backside of the uh, Hogwarts Digital Escape one looks like. So you can see it has 20 sections. It has a lot of text. It has different images, videos embedded into it as well. So this took, with these uh, 20 sections, about four hours to make, and that was creating the storyline, plus lots and lots and lots of edits. When you are ready to share it or think you're at a good place for it, up at the top, you'll see Send. Once you open send, it asks you if you want to send it to specific email addresses. You can copy and paste the link or you can embed it. Once you are ready to let other people proofread it and uh, beta test it for you, you want to uh, share that link with them. Anyone who has the link will have access to it. What I did was I shared the link out to um, some close uh, friends and family and they helped me figure out my math was wrong originally, which was upsetting, um, and also some typos and a few errors, and I had uh, some of my wrong answers linked to the wrong spot, because once you get through that many sections, it is a lot of information for you to have to go through. So there you have it. That is the basics on how to make your very own escape room. I hope that you found some information that you can take and you can use yourself, um, and I hope you learned something. And I just wanted to thank again PA Ford and the Pennsylvania Library Association for allowing us to use their conferencing software. Thanks. Bye.